Hi there, I'm Kirsten Williams and I work with SEC Consulting and we're here today at Shanford Farm to speak about fodder beet. So fodder beet offers loads of benefits, it is nutritionist, it's high yielding and it's extremely palatable for livestock. Hi, I'm Graham Mather uh, from Shanford Farm, breaking here, speaking on behalf of the Mather family. We started growing fodder beet three years ago due to chemicals being limited for turnips and my uncle William had just come back from New Zealand and seen quite a few crops of fodder beet over there when he was over and there was a few crops starting to get grown in Scotland so we thought we'd, we started off I think first year we grew four acres and uh, this year we've got 12 acres in which will be strip grazed with cows and sheep. So here we've got a felled hair variety bit of fodder beet and you'll see that we've got a really really big bulb here and the bulb holds the energy, whereas the leaf holds the protein as well as the minerals. So having the two as a balance is really, really important so that you're not kind of leaving the animal in a deficiency of either energy or protein. The fodder beet can be eaten in the field in situ, and it can also be um, lifted and fed in the, in the house as well for the winter. So when it's fed in the field in situ, um, every day they get a clean break, so it's always fresh in front of them. And having it fresh in front of them is really important, especially for sheep that are really quite selective grazers. They like to have it fresh and that makes it more palatable for them as well, if it's nice and fresh in front of them. And they'll quite often they'll eat the leaf, be nice and um, green and juicy, and then they'll go back and eat, eat up the bulb. And they're getting a really nice balance of their nutrition with, with the leaf and the bulb in there. So we need to measure the yield of the crop to be able to allocate it correctly to the livestock. So the transition of the stock is vitally important and it's got to be a really rigid process. But to be able to do it, you need to know exactly how much yield you've got. And it really depends on your variety to, to how much you've got, because we're looking at the tons per dry matter per hectare. The first thing you want to do is measure your drill width. So it'll either probably be 45 centimetres or 50 centimetres. So if it's 50 centimetres, you're looking at measuring out five metres along a drill. If it's 45 centimetres, you're looking at measuring 5.5 metres along a drill. So you take your tape measure, you go along your drill, you then start to pull beat from both sides. So you'll have two, two drills effectively getting pulled at the same time at your five or your five and a half metres. Once that's pulled, you then take a knife and you cut off your greens from your bulb and then weigh them separately. And the reason that you weigh them separately is because the dry matter will vary between the two of them. So weigh them, record down how much kilos you've got of your bulb and how many kilos you've got of your leaf. You want to take five different areas along the field to get a good representative sample. So once you've recorded all your weights of your five areas, write them down and add them up. So you've effectively got 25 square metres now. You then take that total and times it by 400 and divide it by 1,000. And that is going to give you your total fresh weight per hectare. You then want to see what your dry matter is. So ideally, you would take some cores and send them to a lab to get analysed. If you don't, you can look at your book values, but they do really, really vary. So say we're going to take a 15% dry matter average for your bulb and a 10% dry matter average for your leaf. We would then take our total fresh weight, take your percentage off, and that will give you your total dry matter per hectare of your crop. Add that together with your bulb and your leaf, because you've still got them separate, given your dry matter is different, add them together and that gives you your total yield of dry matter per hectare for your crop. We've measured the crop here at Chamford and using book values as we've taken the samples to analyse today and we've come out at a good, good crop and this is measuring at 26 tonnes per hectare of dry matter. Your average Scottish crop is about 20 tonnes of dry matter. For more information, see the Fodder Beat Grazing Guide.